Uh, what I want to do today is take out just a little bit, and uh, you know, there have been a lot of questions about angels and the, the position of angels, who the angels are, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Uh, there is a seven-week study on angels. There's a five-week study on Satanology, and there's a five-week study on demonology. I'm going to give you. I was going to say 30 minutes, but now it's 23 minutes. The, the 12, uh, 10, 12, 12 week study and hopefully 30 minutes of those, those three things. Okay. Give you an overview of those things so that you can understand. Because so much of scripture talks about angels and do not get confused about angels and things that's happening to angels and so on and so on. Okay? Uh, so we're going to start off, you know, talk, talk a little bit about just the, I guess, characteristic. Angels are created beings. Angels were created by God. They were created prior to Genesis 1-1. Okay? Basically, and they were created all at one time. They were not, you know, created a few here and a few here and a few here, or whatever, whatever was needed, that type deal. But God created them all at one time. They, once they're created, they live forever. They never die. Okay? So the number never changes. So the same today as it was many years ago, same thing, it uh, will be forever until eternity. They are basically sexless, if you will, in that there is no male and female angels. There's only, if you read through scriptures, on the male. On the, on the nouns and pronouns, nouns are male for its angels go. There are no uh, children, there's no young people, there's no old people in scripture for its angels go. It only talks about young men. Okay? And because there is no females and angels, I don't care what this Hallmark movie show and everything else for this female angel coming down and all this kind of stuff, scripture doesn't, doesn't back that up. Okay, so there's none. Because there's no female, there's no intermarriage between them in heaven. Therefore, there's no reproduction. There's no children. There's, you know, brought to angels. Now, we'll talk about in a minute about some of the children that came to earth. You know, that type of deal. Children born here. But, but there's no children. So there's no increase in the number of angels as far as being born. You know, that type of deal. Okay? Um, there are one, basically, reasons being cremated. Cre cremated. Created, they might be cremated too, one of the days. I have no idea, okay? Created basically was to worship God and do God's bidding. Helping everything, more than worshiping God in heaven, but also do God's bidding here on this earth and carry out God's will, okay? Uh, there's different classes of angels, different categories of angels, if you will. Basically, there, you know, we talk about, you know, angelology. Angelology is a study of the good angels, those that stayed in heaven after the revolt, okay? Then they went to Satanology, which after they, after Satan rebelled against God and was thrown out of heaven, you know, that type of position in heaven. So therefore, you know, he is on heaven and earth, uh, you know, for this period of time. We talked a little bit about that, maybe, okay? Uh, the third one is demonology. Demonology, if you look through scripture, when you see the word demons and demonology and everything else, it is fallen angels. It is that group of one-third of the angels in heaven that was thrown out because of rebellion of Satan against God, Okay? So throughout Scripture, when you see the demons or see fallen angels, know that they're one and the same, same ones, okay? They're the ones that actually fall, fell, you know, and, and disobeyed God and disobeyed the worship of God, and that's why they were kicked out of heaven, okay? Um, man, I'm trying to do this down. Let's see. Uh, okay, basically what happened in, in, in heaven was that all angels were created holy. Every one of them was created to be, you know, holy and to worship God in entirety. They had what they called, uh, you know, that, that point in time, let me see if I can spell it, yeah. <coughs> Contrary choice. Contrary choice basically means that when angels were created, God gave them the ability to choose either holiness or the, or the lack of holiness. Now, they can make that choice to either worship God and continue where they were or they could go against their, their choice of being holy and make a different one. That's exactly what happened in, Satan, in Satan's time. Remember, Satan is the number one angel. We'll see that when we get down to the cherub, seraphim, and the angels in the hierarchy and all. But uh, Satan was the number one angel, and Satan chose because he was the the most beautiful angel, because he was the smartest angel, because of everything in his position in heaven, he decided he wanted to be God himself. So what happened was Satan goes, Satan goes around in heaven and gets to the other angels and says, we need to rebel against this God, this God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, rebel against him and make me God. I want to take that position, okay? 
when they did that and God, you know, came to God's attention and when God brought judgment on Satan and threw him out of heaven in his abode in heaven, being there, okay, when he threw him out of heaven, one third of the population of angels that is made and, and you know, God created was following Satan and therefore that one third also left, left out of heaven. And they were, they were cast down to earth. And they're here today as demons and all doing Satan's bidding here on here in this earth type deal. Okay? We look at that and said, okay, what about the other two thirds? If you know one third of them chose to have this contrary choice and go against what their holiness was and rebel against God and commit sin, if you will, and was tossed out of heaven, what about the other two thirds? The other two thirds, once this has happened, once God had brought judgment on the third, one third that rebelled against him and threw them out. The other two-thirds were, were defined as holy, and when they were defined as holy, the ability to choose, the contrary choice, was taken from them, basically, okay? Uh, basically, what, so therefore, they no longer could choose to rebel against God. And we looked at that and said, okay, what, is, what does all that really mean? How does that, how does that relate? Think about that in the, as, as people, as men, as men, as me and you, okay? What happens to us? You and I are made in God's in, image, okay? You and I are made holy. God made us holy from the very beginning. What happened is it's Adam sinned, and when now that when we're born, we're made holy by God, God's creation. But as soon as we're born, we take on that sin nature, the sin nature of Adam, Adam and therefore we have sin in our life. We're, we're, we come out of holiness to a sinful nature. Okay? We live our lives, and but God saw that, you know, hey, he wanted to have some way to reconnect with people. So therefore, he sent his son to bleed and die on the cross so that you and I could have a second chance to holiness. He did not do this to angels. We'll see in chapter 2, verse, oh, I think 7 through whatever, anyway, we'll see that God never provided a second chance for angels. Once they sinned against God, they were doomed forever, period in the sentence. No, cho no chance to go the second time. But you and I as men, we have a second chance to come holy for God. And that he sent his son and provided salvation for us if we'll choose that. When we choose salvation, even though we sin, when we choose salvation, at that point in time when we draw our last breath here on this earth, that we're taken immediately in the presence of God and given a new creation, a new body, that type of deal. When we're given that new body, that contrary choice to sin is also taken away. That's why you will never sin again. You'll never die again. You'll never be under the penalty of sin again. Okay? So we are mirror image of what happened to the angels in heaven, you know, this type of deal, okay? So, therefore, you know, God is saying, you know, that there's a third of the angels which are on earth, which are the demons, which are the bad angels, fallen angels, and the other two-thirds in heaven. They're still doing, the two-thirds in heaven are still doing the bid bidding of God and doing the will of God. They're protecting us, they're leading us, they're bringing judgment on people according to God's will, on and on and on. This goes on the many works that the angels do. That one-third of fallen angels that came down with Satan are doing the bidding of Satan, not God himself. They will never do the bidding of God again, okay? They're doing the bidding of Satan, try to, trying to deceive you and I and trying to make us sin, draw us away from God and draw, lose our salvation, lose that, that chance of salvation, if you will. Remember, all the things they do, you know, they cannot take salvation from you once you have it, but they can help prevent you from coming to salvation and, and being saved for, for eternity, okay? I don't know how, I don't know how fast y'all can listen, but anyway, whatever. <clears throat> okay. Uh, yes? What's that? Oh, angels is one and done. Yes. Angels, once they see in that one time, they're finished. They have no means of salvation. It would be the same for us. We would have no means for salvation once we're born and with a sin nature, once we commit that first sin, we will be one and done and go to hell. Except for God's plan in sending Christ to live as a man, die on the cross, shed his blood, provide redemption for us, and forgive our sins. Our sins are forgiven. Not like the Old Testament where it talks about atonement for. Our sins are forgiven because of the blood of Christ. Since our sins are forgiven, we have that second chance, and now we become holy again. We become holy in the long run, Okay? And that one day when we die and go to heaven, we'll be holy from then on forever. But after salvation, we sin. We become unholy and holy and unholy and holy. Okay? And every time you become unholy, God intercedes for you and says, because you're an idiot, <laughs> 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 you
you sinned again, even though you know better, okay? But my blood is still sufficient to forgive you of that sin. And when they forgive you of that sin, therefore you become holy again. So when you die, you go to heaven and you have that second chance to, to, to be in the presence of God, be forgiven of your sins, okay? Do angels go follow that? No, absolutely not. They do not. Remember, angels only fail one time. There's only one demonology. There's only one time when Satan left and that God threw out that one-third of angels. They are here and they will stay here. Angels transverse. The fallen angels, they, they come down and they stay. Okay? The good angels go back and forth from atmospheric heaven, heaven to earth according to what God's bidding is and according to what God wants them to do. Okay? So they're, I tell you, trans, you know, transfer between the two. Okay? <laughs> uh, out of order. But anyway, angels are a spiritual being. They're not flesh and blood like you and I. They are spiritually being made by God so that they are, but they, are have, they have great limitations. Because they are, even though the power they have, because who made them and their position in heaven and all, they have many of the same problems that you and I do in that they're not omniscient. They do not know everything. Okay? They're not om omnipresent and basically they're not all powerful. They're not, uh, what's that? Okay, well, well, okay, they're not all powerful, they're not all knowing, and they're not all in every position. Okay, that's what our God is. He can be all those things. He can be present here, there, here, there, here, there. Angels can only be at one place at one time. Okay, so they're limited to what they are, even though as strong as they are, you know, that type of thing. Okay? Mark, yes, go. We, we are a spirit with a body. Yes. An angel is a spirit without a body, but they can take on a body. Yes. Okay. Yes. Basically, you know, we are, you know, angel, just a minute, let me ask you one question at a time. Angel, our, our body, our spirit is God's spirit in us, you know, type deal, but we have a body, we have a physical body. Angels will never have a physical body because they're angels. They're not ghosts, but they have, and I can't pronounce the word, they have the ability, in, by, the he, by the Hebrew and the Greek, they have the ability to take on human characteristics. You and I can see angels in this, this class of angels, because of them taking on the human characteristic, which we're able to see. Even though they do not become man, they do not become human, they take on the characteristic of that, and we can see them. Okay? And we can relate to them. They can relate to us okay, because of that. But they're still angels, and they're still a spiritual being, only manifesting themselves to us with a, with a physical body. Okay? And only allows God allows them to have a body. Yes. Only God, God gives them that for a period of time. Whatever that period of time. Usually it's to do a bidding that God has for them. Do a work that he has for them. Okay? Uh, you know, you, you, the show, uh, Bishop's Wife or whatever it is, where the angel came about, you know, doing the, doing the tabernacle they want to build and all this kind of stuff. And he, they took on the physical body for a period of time to, to accomplish God's will in that, and then they went away. Okay? Jimmy. Okay. Evil, evil angels, it doesn't say anything about it. Evil angels taking on physical bodies. You don't see, don't necessarily see them. You see their works, you see those things about it. They may have the possibility of having the capabilities to take on that physical body also. Okay. But you don't see that. I didn't find that anywhere in the studies I did where the fallen angels take on physical bodies around you. They're doing their bidding through, Christ, through Satan to bring you away, to lead you away. They do their bidding in many ways that angels do in visions and dreams, desires of your heart, inside of you. Okay. Yes. Uh, the demons, the demons possess people, by the way. I think they still do that. Demons can possess people, but only through the will of God and only for whatever short period of time that God allows them to do that. Okay? And that possession is by a choice of the person. It does not say anywhere in Scripture that demons can possess people without their allowing that to happen. Okay? Because if they're in the will of God, Satan cannot overrule the power of God, so therefore Satan can't allow them to go. Satan cannot get into a person that is prayed up and have God in their heart. Okay? That would be Satan overruling God and throwing them out. Okay? But, yes, they can possess people. Uh, they, the Scripture talks about possession where the angel of God had to call some out call the demons out, okay? And they went into the swine, all this kind of stuff in Scripture and all, okay? But it is, it is there, okay? 
Any other questions before we move on? Okay. Okay. Here we go. Uh, now we know, we know that also that you know when that one third angel that was brought down to earth, when the fallen angels brought down to earth, when they got down to earth, we have a play, we have a, a teaching for us based in Genesis six. Talk about the Nephilim. N e p h. These were children of angels. Children, even though even though angels are only one sex, they are a sex, a male sex, and it is a place in Scripture that talks about these fallen angels, men fallen angels, came down to earth, saw the women on earth, and intermarried with them and had children. When they intermarried with them and had children, they had a group of children or offspring called Nephilim. Okay. These were, in many places in Scripture, it talks about the Goliaths, the, the great, uh, large people, seven, eight, ten feet tall, great powers, or so forth and so on. It really talks about superior intellect and a being, is what this word is talking about. Every one of these children of the angels and women were not giants, were not large, okay? But some of them were. But it, every one of them had, had a great intellect and a great power greater than, than we as humans. God looked down on this and said, that's not good. That's not good. Now then, all of earth will be, in, be infested with this, this offspring, if you will, between, between having some, some uh, attributes of an angel and some attributes of a human. Okay? So therefore, since it is not good and it would be leading many other people astray, he said, oh, I've got to take care of this. So he sent the floods. He sent the floods. The floods of Noah. God bring judgment on the world and wipe everybody that's alive out in the floods of Noah. With the exception of Noah and his, his children. Okay, the nine people, whatever, in that, in that time. We survived that. But every one of these died and went away. I had a study. I'm never going to get through this day. We'll do it next week. Okay. <clears throat> every one of those children that died and gone away, and I've, all, I've been thinking for years now, trying to study and all this kind of stuff for years, saying, you know, Lord, what about this? We know that these angels that, are, that were siring this group of, of unholy people, angels did not die. They didn't die in the flood because they're a spirit being It says they never die. So they were born, they came down and intermarried with, with women on earth, but the children died, and the women that brought these children into creation died, but the angels never died. My concern of all these many years has been, what about the angels? Where in the heck did they go? What's going to keep them from coming back again and doing this same thing over and over and over and over? Studying all this week, and then and I was, you know, <laughs> to start doing this little study here, of trying to put all these things together, these three aspects of the ologies concerning fallen angels and all. And I was, uh, last night, I was, I was laying in bed, and, you know, Carol said, you want to go to sleep, turn the light out. And I said, okay, I'll, just a minute. And then the, the Lord showed me, for me, what happened to that. Basically, the Lord, you know, says, and goes through Scripture, and, you know, the study that I was doing, goes through Scripture and says that when this happened, when the Lord brought down judgment on the on the children of angels and women when he wiped all of them out he judged also these fallen angels that was doing this exact same thing and what he did when he judged these these men that was siring this this other unhuman race type deal he put them into a call, place called tartarsus tartarsus is a place in sheol or in hell or in hades where he's a confining place so what he did, he sent all these men that did all these things, these, these male angels, to there and confined them in there forever. Once he brought judgment on the earth, wiped them out, he sent them down and confined them. Couldn't kill them because they, 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 you know, when he made them, he made them so that they couldn't be, couldn't be killed. So he sent them down and confined them in, the, in this place in Sheol in Hades until the point where they would be brought to final judgment. We know that all, final, all fallen angels are going to be brought to a final judgment and thrown into the lake of fire. Okay? They do that at the white throne judgment after tribulation, after a thousand years. Okay? These fallen angels that sired the, sired the human race, 
you know, basically are confined into, into this section of Sheol or Hades until the point where the white throne judgment takes place. At that point in time, God is going to bring them out of this holding, this confining place, to the white throne judgment, pronounce judgment on them, and immediately throw them into the lake of fire. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Life was, they, many people would say Goliath is one of these people in that his large size, his, his evil attitude, no, and very well may be. Okay? And that's why many people say that this whole group of people were big people, were large, were, were, were giants, if you will. This word does not mean giant. It can mean giant. That can be one of the attributes of this, of this word being, but all of them might not be. You might have a 10 foot person over here with the Nephilim. And you might have a five-foot person over his death. Bed. All this word is, and all these offsprings were superior, superior in intellect and knowledge and you know and wisdom and all this kind of stuff to the humans around them because they did have some attributes when they were born of the angel realm. Okay? Not full attributes. If they had full attributes, it'd be a male angel and a female angel, and the child would be an angel. Okay? Which doesn't happen, it can't happen. Okay? Any, any other questions? This is deep. It's, it's what? It's deep. No, it's just a shout. What can you get into the study? We'll get deep. Okay, no, it is. It is deep. Okay. Okay, just remember, okay, and I, what I want to do is just give you an overview of here. You have to understand that the fallen angels that come to, come to earth has great power. The demons, I'm, I'm just saying, so I just use demons. That's the, that's the word that many of us use today. The fallen angels had great power in the demonology around the world. That's why you see so much evil here. Because this is, this is the, the realm of Satan. Once Satan is kicked out of his second abode, his second abode is in the mineral gardens, okay, in, like the Garden of Eden. Once he is judged for his rebellion against God, he is kicked out into his third abode. There are six abodes of Satan. You know, it's where he's going to live. From the starting off when he is in the realm around God's throne until the time that he's in the lake of fire. Okay? At the, as soon as he is judged and thrown out of heaven, he goes into what, what's known as the third abode of Satan. Third abode of Satan is the atmospheric heavens. Atmospheric heavens means that place above the earth, above the created earth, and the spans around that, okay? The third heaven, if you will, okay? But Satan, during this time, and, he, and until today, from the time he was judged and thrown out of heaven until today, and all the way until the mid-tribulation time, this is where Satan is. He is between heaven and earth, doing whatever and transitioning back and forth at will. God did not ban him from heaven. At the mid-tribulation time, when the Antichrist comes into being, Satan is going to, again, have a fight with Michael, and Michael is going to throw him out of heaven for earth, and he'll go to earth and spend the last three years on earth, fourth abode, fifth abode, put in the abyss for a thousand years, sixth abode, brought back to heaven, brought back to earth to, you know, fight the final battle, and then thrown into the lake of fire forever and ever, okay? But his third abode is where he is today, is he's between heaven and earth. He goes and sits with God, even though he is evil personified. Okay. He goes and sits with God to accuse you and I. To accuse us and say, why is he allowed to be called the son of God? Why are you saying he's your adopted son when he has sinned in his life? Look what he just did. Look what this idiot just did. And you're going to say you're going to forgive him? On the other side of that same throne is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is sitting there with a the shed blood around him saying, I pay the price for that. Amen. He is our intercessory, okay, defeating Satan as he accuses us in his great role as the accuser of us before God himself. So Jesus Christ overlaps Satan and says, get away from here. That's mine. He is mine. I paid for him, so therefore you and I can get forgiveness of our sin. Okay? But Satan will continue to do that. He will continue to work the evils here on this earth. Throughout the time, from, from the time he's thrown out of heaven until the time that he is brought to judgment to get the end of the tribulation period and bound in the abyss, okay, for a thousand years. But that's Satan's, that's Satan's job. Yes, ma'am? So he can't go up there and recruit other angels. He can go up there and he said he's the only job when he goes up there is to accuse you and I. 
He is not recruiting other angels because they have no choice to make that to go to that. He is not up there to to be deflammatory or to, to get more angels to come out of heaven. No, he is, that is not his job. Okay, but also have to remember that Satan, since he is transversing between heaven and heaven and earth, Satan is the was made basically, if you will, okay, the third of well, fourth in power. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, Trinity. They're first in power. The second in power, major power of all time, is Satan himself. Okay? Even though Satan is thrown out of heaven, he still holds that position of power. And he will hold that position of power until such time as God judges him at the end of the time and throws him in the lake of fire. Okay? Even though he'll be bound in abyss for a thousand years, he'll still have that power. He just can't exercise it at that point in time. Did you have a question? You just Okay, good. <laughs> Let me think about that, man. <laughs> okay. That just kind of tells me, okay, is there any other one? Yes, Judy. So that's the Job story. I'm sorry? That's the Job story. That's, that's a lot of his Job story, yes. A lot of that is, is the thing that Satan is, the power that Satan has over even earth. But there is a limit to where that goes. Just like in the Job story. You know, God gave Satan the ability to take his family, take his wealth, take his possessions, everything else. But you will not touch his life. Amen. So God got to let Satan do everything up to here and says, nah, that's it. And then God restored Job. And that, that, yes, okay, So where did the demons come from? The demons we come from is that, that those fallen angels, that one third of the angels made by God that came to earth when they rebelled against God. That's the demons. Fallen angels and demons are exactly the same people. Okay? Okay, they're not the ones that, that are locked up right now? No, demons are not locked up. Now, me, demons, demons, well, y'all are going to be late. That's okay. <laughs> demons, demons, basically, right now, we have that one sex demon which is confined for basically eternity. That's the people that sired that, that fallen race, okay? They're confined in Tartarus or whatever in, in, in Sheol in Hades for eternity to the white throne judgment. Other demons are acting throughout the earth, doing Satan's bidding of, of everything and anything he wants them to do to help you fall away from grace. Okay? That's their entire purpose, their entire thing that they do. And they will continue to do that. Okay? From now on until the time that they're judged. At one day, all people will be judged. Either to judgment seat of Christ, which is you and I, for the works we've done and given eternity of living with God because of salvation he has, or else it's a white throne judgment. We're all the lost people we judge. That lost people would be judged there. We know we know the Antichrist is judged there at the end of the tribulation thrown in the in the lake of fire. At the white throne judgment, all the others lost. From Satan, the fallen angels, to lost people. When we say, depart from me because I never knew you. We never can have salvation, and all of them will be thrown in the lake of fire forever. Okay, but until that point in time, demons will live amongst us, and the demons living amongst us is the fallen angels that come out. How many angels are there? Scripture says thousands upon thousands, ten thousands upon ten thousand. There's a multitude. There is no number anywhere in Scripture that says you know there's 186 million 517 angels. Okay. There are just an unnumbered number of angels that God made. Okay? And the things that God does, things that God does through his, his angels for the good of us, Satan and his demon angels, fallen angels, are trying to do right opposite of that to, to defeat us and therefore take us away from the glory of God. That's a, that's a struggle that's happening today. To give you just one quick one, I'll get you out of here and we'll finish up whatever we need to next week. One quick thing, you know, we know that, you know, Satan is, is the head cherub. He's the number two in position. There's three set, three categories of angels, uh, cherubs, seraphim, and then angels, okay? And we'll get this next week. Angels, Michael, the great, the greatest angel there is in this, lot of, this bottom group of angels, the great power that he has doing the will of God and everything else. Michael and Satan were arguing in Jew, the, the Jew story, arguing over the body of Moses. And Satan says, no, I'm going to take him. And, and Michael says, no, we're going to take him. 
And as soon as they started this argument, Mark, Michael turned around to the great power he has and looked at Satan and says, I can't defeat him. He is still the number two person in hierarchy. Still has that kind of power. Okay? So Michael says, okay, I can't defeat you, so I, in my power you could take the body of Moses. But guess what Michael did? Same thing you and I must do. Lord, you take care of this. He calls God down and told God to take care of the problem of Moses and, and Satan. And that is say once God got involved, guess what? Satan kind of backed up and says, oh, well, I didn't really want him anyway. Okay? <laughs> Isn't that something? But if the number, if Michael, the, heart, the highest angel in the angel, angel hierarchy in this group of angels, the guardian angel of Israel, the guardian angel of, of Christianity, if you will, if he can't defeat Satan, how do you think that you can defeat Satan? I see so many people say, go out and rebuke Satan and throw, people, throw Satan out of personal lives and everything else. You know, and they do that saying, all you got to do is just go and tell them, you know, Satan, I rebuke you and throw you out of life. If you do that, you're a dead man. I truly believe Satan will strike you down. Now, we have one example of, you know, I think we're in life, and I'll try to tell you that some other time. But anyway, that, that uh, where this person tried to rebuke Satan and, and fight against Satan, and for years, they didn't know whether this person was going to live or not, ever be the same or not. Okay? Because Satan, you don't rebuke Satan. You and I do not have that kind of power. If an angel, the hierarchy, the highest angel ever was, is going in the in the group of angels down here at the bottom for his angel, cannot rebuke Satan, you and I have no chance. Except, except it says, you rebuke Satan, you defeat Satan by scriptures and the word of God. You and I can defeat Satan and all the things he does in our lives and the lives of people around us. By the word of God. By telling God, God, you take over. You defeat Satan. You accomplish your end in this world. Okay? That's where our power comes from, is right here. Not, not to say that we can do that. You and I can't do that. Okay? We'll finish up next week. See you next week. We'll finish it next week. Promise.